All right. Well, hello there. So glad you've tuned into the sketch session. So I'm just waiting a quick second to see myself on the other screen and I already see myself so perfect. So glad you're tuning into the sketch session tonight. And if you're ready to have about an hour's worth of animal sketching and talk about the basics of drawing in terms of what should we be focusing on when we draw and when we have a certain reference image in front of us, what would be wiser to choose? linear gesture or shape-based value drawing. Um, if that is something you're interested in, then you're in the right place. That is exactly what I will be talking about today. And of course, it's not just going to be talking, we're going to be drawing. I have lots of beautiful animal references and they're all of um, animals on the pasture because it makes me happy to draw animals and I hope it makes you happy to draw animals as well. And um, yeah, I have about an hour's worth of images. And before we get going though, I will give you a little bit of a lesson just so you have something to gnaw on as we're going through these sketches. Of course, you can always put me on mute, just follow along with the images and do your own thing. Um, if you've never sketched with me, my name is Carolyn. I'm the owner of Cura Studios, and that's where I teach classical drawing skills so artists can build a rock solid foundation to explore their creative voice from. and these sketch sessions, they're not meant to be art making sessions. These sketch sessions, we get together for an hour and a half, or something like that, and we, we fail together. <laughs> and that means we just try out new things in the privacy of our own four edges. And uh, if it works out, great. If it doesn't work out, no big deal. We just throw them in the trash can. The idea is that we don't get better if we don't practice. Art is a practice, that's my motto. And so I want you to draw along with me. Don't just watch. I know you'll learn a little something, but it's much more effective if you're actually drawing along with me. So to get the most out of this, put this on the biggest screen that you have available to you um, and uh, draw along. So you can hear me talk, you can hear me give you little things to think about, to adjust as you're working on your own. It's like being at the gym with a coach who tells you, and one more, or like, I don't know what coaches tell you at the gym. Um, but you know, it's, it's nice to have that motivation that comes from somebody else. So you don't have to muster it all on your own. With that said, I'm going to switch the camera because I want to show you some little notes that I've prepared already so you um, know what you can think about and choose from as we're getting into the drawing portion. So let me switch this over real quickly. Okay, so what I prepared here is a list of elements that we can focus on when we sketch. So I think I said it in the intro that these sketches, they, they will be really brief. So we will begin with some poses that are like three minutes, um, then we build to five, seven minutes, and then the longest one will be a 15 minute pose. And of course, when you only have this little time, you cannot address everything. And that's a good thing. But instead of freaking out and having a brain freeze, we want to have something we can target, something that we can latch onto, knowing that, okay, if I focus on this, then I can let go of that. So let's go through this list. So when we draw, we have, this is our menu that we can choose from. We can choose to focus our drawings online and that would be, um, or we have multiple options here. We have the option of refined contour line. We take a lot of um, painstaking care to create a really beautiful um, contour drawing. Or you can be very sketchy and gestural in this um, line focused sketch. And I brought some of my own sketches just so you can see an example of what this would look like. So if you have a line focused sketch, these here are all line focused, right? You can see the contour here. I'm playing a little bit with darker accents and lighter accents, broken lines in here. So this would be an example for a line focused sketch. Now, what am I not addressing here? All the other stuff like um, shape. So you can create a sketch that isn't so interested in maybe a gestural line, but is taking it to another level and is really focusing on making a two dimensional, flat, really well crafted shape. So shape is 2D, it's flattening things out, like think about it as the silhouette. 
And uh, if you need an example for that, of what that would look like, this is from one of our sketch sessions a while ago um, where we did bugs and blossoms. But here I was interested in getting some really good specific shapes. Um, I didn't focus so much on uh, a gestural line in that regard. And here I'm talking about how you can get a good shape by focusing on angles. Okay, then you can also say that in this sketch, you're not that interested in creating a silhouette, you want it to look really three-dimensional, then you'd be focusing on form. So shape is 2D, form is 3D, and that just means that you take your flat stuff and you make it look like it has volume, right? And um, an example of that would be something like this. Now this is a longer sketch, so I'd spend more than 10 minutes on this. This was also from one of our sketch sessions together, but can you tell how I'm really trying to use cross contour marks? I'm trying to use the idea of ellipses wrapping around the antlers. I'm trying to think about where's the plane change here. So I'm, I'm thinking about all this form stuff in this sketch. And this can look much more simplistic. It doesn't have to look this um, realistic. It can, be, it can look more blocky and um, mannequin-like. You can then take this a step further and um, apply light and shadow. Light and shadow, if you apply that into a sketch situation, can look as simple as this. So again, we're talking about short sketches, right? Not, not like two hour drawings. Here I have a figure drawing where I focused on the shadow pattern. Now, of course, when we have to make these choices, I have only two minutes. What am I going to address in my sketch? You, as, as I said, you'll have to let go of a bunch of stuff. So here I'm letting go of details. I'm letting go of form. So it's a very flat drawing, but flat doesn't have to be bad, right? It's all about what you are interested in. So in this pose, I was interested in the pattern. And so you always, when you have a reference piece in front of you, whether it's a human being on the stage or an animal photo on the computer, you ask yourself about every single image. What is it that I'm interested in in this piece? Okay, so another one, aside from light and shadow, would be value. And now you might be thinking, wait, what? Wasn't light and shadow value? Isn't that the same thing? And I'm here to tell you that it's not the same thing. Value is, um, like you can think of it as local value, like the, the inherent color of something, whether, um, an animal is black or white, or black and white, right? So that would be the difference in value. And you can focus on that. So I think I have an example in here. Oh yeah. So here, in these two sketches, again, quick sketches, nothing finished, but I did choose to focus on the darkness. So this is like this little forest stream, and I'm focusing on the darkness of this little stream coming through and how it compares to the lightness of the the more light ground or even more simply here this little bird i was um, bringing out the darker value of that black ring around its neck the darker value of the wings and then the lighter value of the chest so this would be an example of a very quick sketch that focuses on bringing out some of the value and then last but not least is texture. So that is the idea of um, or whether something is looking more slick and shiny or whether it's looking hairy. And um, an example that I have ready for you is this little guy. It's also from one of our sketch sessions where I focused on bringing out the texture of the fur. And so it's pulling out these little textural elements. So I wanted to begin with this. So when we start drawing, you're not just randomly making marks as you usually do, but you actually can now focus your attention and you can make yourself a goal. Now, does it mean that you're gonna um, be successful with your goal? No, not necessarily. There are no assurances in art, uh, but at least you can then assess if you did well or not, right? So um, before I hit the play button on my reference, I have one more thing that we're gonna do. And that is we're going to warm up our hands. So if you've ever been in a drawing class, you'll have had a teacher most likely tell you how beneficial and virtuous it is to warm up your hand. And we all 
kind of nod our heads and think about, yeah, I guess that sounds about right. Just how you would stretch before you work out or I don't know, prepare your food before you start cooking. Um, we, 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 we get the idea of warming up our hand, but then we never do it. So that's why I'm here with you today and I'm gonna make you do it. <laughs> of course, you can pause and walk away. You have the freedom to do that, but we might as well. So let's warm up our hands and let's begin by just um, aiming our lines to become more assured. So what we wanna get away from when we sketch is this kind of mark making. We kind of redraw the same thing over and over again. We kind of zigzag our lines, just a very hairy, um, not so great line quality. So instead, we want to practice making lines like we mean them and like we know what we're doing. And the way to practice this, the way to warm up is you draw dots and then you aim with your pencil at the dot. And you wanna do this from the bottom up, from the top down. You wanna do this in different angles, top left to top right, the other way around. And you'll notice that some of them are really easy for you and some of them are gonna be really challenging. And sometimes you'll hit the dot and sometimes you don't hit the dot. So let's do this for a while. And you will want to also vary your lengths. So um, some lengths, will be easier for you, most likely the short ones, and the longer ones might be more challenging for you. But that doesn't mean that we should avoid it and beat ourselves up over it if we don't hit the spot or if it, you know, just misses the mark by a lot or if it becomes wobbly, you do your best. So let's keep going for a little bit more just to build that confidence in our marks. So drawing, in particular sketching, like when you're sketching for fun and you're just doing it because you like drawing and you, in the end, ideally wanna have a cute little drawing that you're, you know, not ashamed of, then you really benefit from having a steady or a sure hand. So if you if you always draw like this, you know, where you're kind of gripping really tight and you're constantly like scratching, your the quality of your sketch is never going to be as pleasing as it could be. So now that we've done some straight lines, let's switch gears a little bit and let's um, practice making curves. And so you can do this also with, with dots. So you can make two dots and then create a curve. Ooh, see how I missed that one? Quite by a bit. Ooh, and again. So I'm gonna miss a few until I get it right. And we just keep going with it. And so ideally, <laughs> if you're one of those virtuous artists, um, before you get into your sketch session, you do this for a minute and you know, um, I'm a big believer in timers, putting a little kitchen timer on and doing this until the timer goes off. Um, it'll, it'll serve you well. So we can keep going with the arcs. And again, just with the angles, we want to change up the direction of these arcs, the angle of these arcs, the widths of these arcs. And see where that will lead us and you know the thing that it does aside from like making you draw better curves it teaches your brain not to freak out when things don't go as planned like nothing is gonna light on fire the the drawing isn't gonna go to hell you know it's just it's just a line so Let's add one last element to this and then we'll actually draw our animals. I think then we've been um, eating enough drawing spinach, if you get my Popeye reference here. So let's just practice some ellipses. And you can make your ellipses horizontal and you can make your ellipses really narrow and you can make your ellipses super long and you can make them, you can even make little circles they don't have to be ellipses. So all ellipses are, are visually squeezed, visually distorted circles. And so if you're doing this right now, 
watch out if you're doing this be honest or you're like really slowly squeaking your way around your circle and then you end up with kind of a lumpy pancake um try what i'm doing see i'm, I'm using my knuckles here and rub them against the page to steady my hand and i'm free handing them in the air first before i touch down and the first ones will look awful if you've never done this before if you've never yeah if you've never done this before uh, but the more you do them the more you get through that awful stage the better they'll get okay Whee! that was a bad one right there okay so i think you get the idea and as i said next time when you draw do this before you get started set a timer for three to five minutes and it, it's a nice way to transition from your everyday brain to your drawing brain it's not so abrupt okay so let me hit the play button here and you've already had a chance to look at this reference image this is clearly an image that's full of movement and so that naturally leads me to say i want to focus on gesture energetic lines that carry the eye through the pose so i have five minutes for this image because we have two animals so you get two and a half minutes per animal per horse and just because we have a little time does not mean we should be drawing hectically. Pausing often is totally legit. There's nothing wrong with you if you pause during your drawing as long as you're looking at your reference. Like if you're pausing to stare at your drawing I'm not sure if that's so useful, but if you're pausing to get a better understanding of, okay, let me see, how does the neck visually connect with that leg? Oh, I see, it kind of does that kind of a thing. Then that's totally fine. Drawing is not just about making marks. So you, you see what I'm trying to do in this line focused sketch? I'm trying to create lines that connect one body part to the other body part. So that's really what gesture is about. It's trying to create a unity between the individual pieces. And nothing does it better than line. Of course, you can draw gestures with shapes too, but if you're after that unified look, you wanna get some good rhythmic lines on the page so here i'm snapping some cross contours around the belly indicating some roundness but i'm still mainly focusing on rhythmic lines so I should have said that when I was going through this menu of options that we have that we can focus on. It doesn't just have to be one item from the menu. You can focus on line and form. You can focus on form and light and shadow. So this menu is not just one choice only. Okay, so I'm getting to the other horse and I'm seeing that strong angle. And you can exaggerate that to make that action even more impactful. So yeah, we get, you see how if we let our eyes slide down the neck of the horse and then to the chest and then to the belly you see how that creates a hook so if you make that hook slightly tighter then it'll be a more dynamic pose so more tension um, 
gives us a bit more drama. And coming back to line quality, so I'm letting my hand search. Searching is different, in my opinion, from chicken scratching, from scratching in a way where you're unsure and second guessing yourself. So my marks are, and, and, and the way you can see it in the marks is that my marks like this are long. They follow through. They might repeat because it helps me feel things out. Especially if I keep a steady rhythm. And let's talk about speed. Um, drawing faster isn't necessarily better. So if you are an artist who feels like, oh gosh, I'm always so slow and she's drawing both horses and I'm barely getting to the butt of the other horse. I haven't even gotten to the second horse yet. Don't worry about that kind of stuff. Those kind of thoughts, they just hold you back. Okay, so let's move on to this proud little guy. Um, before I start, let me take a look at this. You know what I love? I, so the way you want to start your sketch, however briefly, you want to ask, what do you love about this? And I love the feathers on the neck. So I'm going to make sure that I capture those. So by the way, um, if you've been sketching with me regularly, or even if you're new and you're kind of liking this way of sketching along and you want to do more of this, you want to check frequently on my channel's about page and see what the schedule is for the sketch sessions because I'm shifting things around. I used to do the sketch sessions every single week and I'm shifting things around to also produce some more um, produced videos, more tutorials, um, and you want to be aware when which weeks we have sketch sessions and which weeks you can watch a produced video to study more deeply um, so you know exactly what's coming down the pipe and if you don't want to miss any of it of course you want to get on my mailing list the insiders mailing list there are multiple links in the description box that you can sign up through and you'll get little free workbooks or there's even a free figure drawing class depending on what you sign up for and like that you'll always know if there's a sketch session coming up or if it's a produced video okay so here I'm, I'm using lines mainly to establish my gesture and I'm gonna see how much time I have left if I can get into some more articulated shapes knowing full well that three minutes minutes is not a lot of time here. And I'm working with a Prismacolor colored pencil today, not the color race ones that I usually use. This is, I don't even know what type this is, but I like it, it's, it's a little softer. It shows up on the video a little bit better but I have to resharpen it so you'll hear this loud buzzing sound in a sec that's just my electric pencil sharpener so again I manage my time so I get to this frill here Ah, see, I already ran out of time. I'm glad I caught that. Okay, another three minutes for this lovely sheep. And I thought for that one, it's perfect to focus on the form because see how it's coming at us so strongly. So we're dealing with foreshortening. The best way to deal with foreshortening in my book is through overlapping shapes and then teasing them into forms. So here's what I mean by that. So here's gonna be my 
my sheep. I'm just getting the size established right now. And now I'm going, okay, where are the hips? If the hips are an oval, here are the hips. See, good that we practiced ovals, right? Then I'm overlapping the hip oval with the belly circle. So right now I'm dealing just with shapes, right? Ovals and circles, they're two dimensional, but I'm placing them in a way where I feel like they overlap correctly. And then I'm overlapping this with a ovally circle. That's the technical term for the shoulders. So I always like building from the back to the front. And then we have this kind of rectangular shape for the neck and this wedge-like shape. or kite or arrow shape for the head. Let me, sorry, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil. Let me clarify this visually a little bit. So right now everything looks very faint. So I'm gonna say this jawline is overlapping this neck. This neck is overlapping my shoulders. And that goes then down into the leg. I don't know if I said shape or form for us to focus on. I meant shape to use the shape overlaps to create the illusion of this being in space. So I might have misspoken earlier. The shape of this leg in. So now I'm saying, and this mouth shape here is overlapping this belly shape. See that clear T, clear T intersection right here. See, this here is in front of that here. And then this belly here is overlapping the haunches in the back. And like that, first of all, I kind of didn't even have to get freaked out over foreshortening. And I have an idea of, you know, this sheep in space, pasture space. <laughs> okay, five minutes for this horse. Let me get a fresh page. So here, it's it's a really great um, reference for combining line for gesture and maybe some form. Again, we're having a strongly foreshortened situation happening here. So let's see what we can do. So I'm, I'm asking myself, how does this all visually connect? Like, butt to shoulder to the foot that's making landfall here. <laughs> and I mean, look at this. This is so weird looking. Some weird loop on a string. Our drawings don't have to look like the thing that we were drawing for a very long time only as we get further into the drawing that we need to start to make things happen if we want it to look horse-like or sheep-like. So I'm pausing myself, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, this is this movement, then what, what's the overall movement if I really had to break it down to the legs? I would say the dominant movement would be this. And then these two hooves, they line up like that. So by the way, let me put this in the chat real quick before I forget. I'm gonna put it later on in the description of the video or in the comments. Um, as I told you, I'm shifting things around with how I'm releasing videos and um, when we're doing sketch sessions, I want your input. Like, especially if you if you come to the sketch sessions often or you watch the recordings often, I just put a link to a survey 
into the comments. Please, if you want to have your opinion heard on what I should cover, like if you want me to explain certain things, um, take that survey. It only takes two minutes. And anybody who takes the survey gets entered into a raffle for three art books. There are two Bern Hogarth uh, Dynamic Anatomy, I think. And then the other one is a, um, what's his name? Norman Rockwell, Normal, Norman Rockwell book. So if you want to have a chance to win one of these books, fill out the survey and also it'll help you get the kind of videos, the kind of sketch sessions that will help you the most learn more. And so I've been chatting so much now that I'm, I'm not sure how far I'll get in this drawing, but see, main thing right now that I'm working on is the gesture, getting that whew, swoop down and the impact like that's not it should be more like this and then we have the pressure landing down here like that more like this and I might have made it too long let's see if I have some time to work on the overlap so I have my neck shape here head shape is overlapping the neck shape see this head is being overlapped by the neck the neck is being overlapped by the shoulders and I'm not just drawing the segment that I can see. I'm trying to imagine, okay, what is this whole shoulder shape like? I don't have to draw it super dark over here, but you know, you do want to think about the whole thing. And then this is being overlapped by this round belly midriff. So again, it's all about these points here this shoulder being overlapped by this this neck being overlapped by this shoulder and then I can't that leg so I'm simplifying the leg into simple shapes and ovoids are my go-to so just a big oval for the butt cheek a big oval for the hamstrings and I would continue my way down here but I'm out of time on to the next one so these cuties we have two minutes for that two minutes seven minutes that is we have seven minutes for them so let me see I have enough space okay what I like about and so again I always begin with what do I like about this I like the silhouette of the black sheep behind the the white sheep. So I'm definitely going to focus on the black silhouette. I'm of course also going to focus on the little white guy in the front. But yeah, I think I'm just going to focus on playing off the two values here. So I'm going to make a value centered sketch. At least that's my intention. So again, we, we set our intention, we set our like clarity of like, oh yeah, that's, this is what I like. And then we go through the process and mid process, we might totally forget about what our intention was, or we might decide, oh, you know what? I actually don't like the value. I'm more interested in the curls. I want to do texture instead. Um, but at least you're becoming more conscious of your drawing process. And I think that is the biggest key if you want to improve. Because if you don't make these conscious choices, what happens is you just go on autopilot. And when you go on autopilot, you just repeat old habits. And if you're, you know, classically trained and you have good habits, awesome. Just keep doing your good habits, you know. Uh, but if, if you're just starting sketching and you have, don't quite know yet what you're doing, or you had just one class and, you know, you're refreshing what you learned, or you're trying to maintain what you learned, um, you have to, like, pull your thoughts around drawing into the light so you can examine them, become more aware of them, and then make those choices consciously rather than just on default.
And if you want to be a real studious art student, um, here's what I recommend. At the end of the session, rather than, you know, closing the page and wiping off the sweat and go, whew, glad that that's over, um, especially if it's not going that well, instead of just like walking away, stay just a little longer and go through your sketches, not to assess them in terms of, oh, well, this one sucked. And well, I guess that one wasn't all that shitty. Like, not like that, but like go through your sketches and, and think back, okay, what, what did I try to focus on here? Oh yeah, it was value. Well, I guess I didn't focus on value in the end. I focused on whatever it is you focused on. And, and you just notice that you, you make a mental note like, okay, I didn't stick to my plan. Huh? I wonder why I wonder what I can do differently next time so I can stick to my plan. Maybe I need to talk out loud to myself and, and, and say, okay, and now I'm drawing the value, you know, um, you need to become uh, kind of a, your own problem solver. If you're wondering about how I'm holding my pencil and why sometimes I hold it like this and other times I hold it like that, um, that has to do with the scale of my marks. So when I draw in small areas or if I draw in a small sketchbook, I tend to hold my pencil like I'm holding like a writing implement, you know, like I'm writing my name. But if I want to make longer marks, or if I, if I have a big drawing board that I'm working on that facilitate longer marks, I want to hold my pencil like this so I can have a bigger arc to work with. Okay, I have a feeling I'm running out of time for my plan here. So to keep myself accountable, I'm making myself move into capturing the value, even though there's so many other things calling my name, like, oh, that beautiful detail in the eye, I'd love to just render away at that, or all well, those curls, as I said earlier, those are just, you know, ah, it would be so neat to work on um, but yet this is a practice session not a just drawing for the hell of it session so I'm gonna stick to what I said I would do I'm gonna practice something I'm practicing making conscious choices in my drawing process so next time when I actually care about my drawing and I have more time, then I, I know what questions I need to ask myself at what time. I know how I need to switch gears if I want to accomplish my goal. Here I'm looking at this little guy in the back. Awesome. Um, Rakshi, I'm so glad you're starting your day with some animal sketches. I personally can't think of a better way to start either. <laughs> and for all of you who um, are able to type, um, if you're not drawing right the second, or if you want to take a little one minute break, let me know in, in the chat what's your favorite animal to draw if you have a favorite if you if you don't care uh, if you're more like me and you're like you'll take it all you just type um all in the comments but again if you're drawing i get it like don't don't feel like you have to interrupt your drawing so also notice how ah shoot <laughs> i guess don't notice but like what i was going to say that if i focus on value notice how i make my marks they're all just one direction. I'm creating flat value. So I'm, I have a dark sheep in the back, a light sheep in the front, and I'm just pushing that local value by um, straight lines. 
Okay, so here we have another cluster of animals. I hope they're showing up for you. Okay, so Mirna, you like all of them too. Chris, I remember you like dogs, yes. Um, you know, I'm planning a sketch session in the future with some wolves. I have some great references for wolves, so that might be up your alley. Okay, so let's see. Let me pause. What do I love about this? I love the floppy ears. I love the goose in the background. <laughs> so let's see where that takes me. You know what? So then this is something that I haven't talked about. It's not, it doesn't um, fit into the classical order of principles that I listed out, like the line, shape, form, order of things. But I like the complexity of the overlaps like how we have the pig being overlapped by the chicken and then the pig is overlapping the goose and, and how there are these complex sub shapes in there. I really like that. So I guess it would then become about shape, wouldn't it? So you see, often you begin with something that entices you you just kind of have to talk it through with yourself like okay what is it exactly that I like about this is it the light I like about this or is it the texture I like about this so drawing is a lot about talking to yourself preferably quietly so people don't think you're weird but who cares, <laughs> right? If, if you have to talk out loudly, then talk out loudly, just as long as you pay attention to your drawing process. So by the way, just because I'm choosing this area where things are overlapping doesn't mean you need to choose that area. As I said, we, we want to begin intentionally based on what's interesting to us. So you could maybe could care less about all these overlaps. Maybe you're just really interested in the chicken, just, just the chicken, nothing else. And of course you want to focus on that. There is with art, there's no single right answer out there that if only you knew everything about art, you'd finally understand. The answer is you. Like, what is it that you're interested in about the world, about um, your chosen subject matter? Uh, and that guides your decisions then in your drawing process. There's nothing out there that is right and, and if only you understood that finally you know you'd make good art now that is different of course from understanding the classical fundamentals of good drawing you know like having good technique understanding the basics frees you up then to focus on what it is you're interested in. Like if you're interested in um, space, like spatial relationships, let's say like urban environments, you just love urban sketching, but you really care about making it look right, uh, you better have studied some perspective then, you know? Or if you really just love drawing people, it's probably good to have studied uh, how forms build and what anatomy does and all that stuff. So yes, we do want to build our skills with classical training, but the training alone isn't going to make your art good. Your decisions are going to make your art good. <laughs> Mirna, that's funny. Oh, well, you, you, you kind of are talking to somebody else. You're talking to your creative self, you know? <laughs> so 
So if you're wondering, well, why aren't we drawing longer poses? Like what's with all the short poses? Like, you know, I kind of like what we're doing here, but man, if I only had just another 10 minutes, finally I could finish something. Like I totally get that. But here's the thing, like most of the time you're drawing for as long as you need to anyways. Like, so it's not like you can't go back to drawing next time where you give yourself all the time in the world. But when we make ourselves make quick decisions, like if we make ourselves get the drawing down in seven minutes to whatever we're able to do in seven minutes, it increases the speed with which we make our marks or let's call it with which we make our decisions on paper. And the quicker and more confident you become with your decisions on the page, the better of a draftsman you become. But you're not gonna get to quicker decisions, quicker decisive marks if you keep drawing like you always draw, if you always give yourself a full hour to just draw, draw a little drawing, right? We can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. It just doesn't work that way. See, and are we finishing stuff? No, we're not finishing stuff. We're just practicing. Just how a push-up is not a performance. A push-up is getting to, is being done to make, to get stronger. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil one more time. Okay, seven minutes on this little beauty here. Not sure what I like about this. Hmm. You know, maybe I like the forms of it. Like the, I can, I can see the, the muscles on the shoulder blade and, and the muscles on the neck. I kind of like that. So maybe I'll focus on that. So your starting point should be, or a good starting point, I don't like shoulds, but a good starting point is beginning with what is interesting to you. But then another good question is what really stands out about the image you're working from? Or, you know, if you're drawing from life, like let's say you have a um, figure drawing model in front of you, like what really stands out to you about the model? Maybe they're very well defined and you can really see all the muscles. You know, that might invite you then to make the, the figure drawing session about practicing your anatomy rather than focusing on value, you know? Um, so th that's like the, the twofold decision process that you wanna go through. What's interesting to you and what does the subject matter really lend itself toward? So here's the bell, here's that, and then we have the shoulder slanting back. And then we have this leg coming forward. And we have this neck thing. I wonder what that's called. It's almost being cinched up here by that bell. Hmm. Okay. This is a little overcommitted here. Ah. Okay. So so far I have not focused on form much. I'll definitely focus on it for one of the longer poses that are coming up. So 
So again, um, so form and spatial relationship, they're kind of similar. So how do things sit in space? So rather having a form like this pencil here sit in relationship to you like this or this. So this leg here is doing this, right? And so by me saying this here is in front of this here or this line here is in front of this elbow line that already explains part of that spatial relationship and then you can come in here and work with some cross contours and explain the form of it remember how I showed you that deer um, image earlier so focusing on cross contours um, is, is a good way to describe form. So what's, what's a cross contour? If you're not familiar with that, what I'm pretending is I'm pretending I'm an ant and I walk across the form and my feet are dipped in um, black paint and I'm walking across and over the form what kind of lines would I get? Another way to think about this is if I slice through perpendicular to the axis of the form that I'm working on, what would the cut look like, the face of the cut? So those are cross contours. And as, I, as you might've noticed, I'm not drawing the whole cross contour. I'm just picking out little sections that will help me describe the form in that area. So you can be selective about this. So here, I like to begin by mapping out my muscle shapes very lightly, and then I put those cross contours. The good places where you see these darker areas, these more shadow, mid-tone areas. So you see here, this is this plane of the shoulder that's facing forward, so it's coming up and then over, up and over. So you can shade that in, make it look a little bit more robotic, or you can just see with a more um, organic way of drawing right here. So with these cross contours, you want to make sure that they don't contradict each other. So sometimes you might make a mark on one part of the drawing and then another one on the other part and you feel like they're canceling each other out. It's good to begin lightly and then whichever one you just put down that kind of is competing with the other one, erase it back out and try it the other way. Uh, and there's no shame in that, you know, it's like, gosh, Sometimes I don't know, you know, I need to see it first to decide is it this way or that way. Okay, look at this beauty. So here I threw that guy in because it's going to be really great for light shadow. So I need to take a sip of my drink first. Okay, gorgeous little, probably a bowl, I'm guessing. Okay. So I love the light shadow separation in this piece. Love the face, so that's what I'll focus on. Also like his hairstyle or her, her hairstyle, I think it's a him. I'm beginning with an underdrawing, and as you might have noticed, my underdrawings, they're very general. I'm 
just looking at the biggest bigger shapes and how they relate to each other or the like how the one line of the ear over here might visually flow into the line of the other ear so we call this a gesture line right where we connect two elements with each other so long fluid curvy marks capturing mainly the scale of things so at this point you don't need to worry about detail you don't need to worry about making it look like a cow you just need to um, decide how big do I want this to be on my page where on my page do I want this to be and how big is this ear width in relationship to the nose length And these marks, they're very faint. So if you're thinking, oh man, I can't even see what she's drawing, it's because I'm not pressing hard. You'll, you'll see later on, it'll, it'll come more into focus, but the reason why you're not seeing much is because I'm having a very light touch. I'm starting to notice plane changes. So plane changes are where the surface of a form changes direction, like the bridge of the nose here will face this way, and then over here, this is angling that way. And where those two meet, like right here, that's our plane change. So these lines that I'm putting in, they're plane change lines. And they're good to put in as you're kind of orienting your way around the drawing because they'll help you create form later on. So cross contours, plane changes, those are all elements in a drawing that help us create the illusion of three-dimensionality. And so this guy here, he's kind of lumpy and kind of angular. I kind of like that. So I'm allowing myself to work on that. And I haven't forgotten about my shadow pattern, my light shadow separation. But here's what you'll find. Being aware of your plane changes will be really helpful when you get your shadow patterns in. Why? Because as the planes angle, to different directions. They either catch the light more strongly, um, less strongly, or not at all. And whenever they don't catch the light at all, you have yourself a shadow mass. <laughs> so being aware of your plane changes is really good before you get into plotting out your shadow shapes. Okay, having fun with that little hair tuft and trying to get to a place where I can be a bit more specific about these shapes without spending a crazy amount of time on it. And so here I'm mapping my first shadow shape. So you see how this ear is blocking the light. And it's best to do this while, while you're squinting. You're squinting and you're kind of zooming out. You're looking at the ear area, like really squint hard. Um, ask yourself what is bluish or darkish and what is bright and light. And right where those two meet, you want to plot out the shape for that. So when I focus on light and shadow, I'm not beginning with 
shading. Yes, light and shadow is part of the shading equation, but that's not where I begin. I begin with the edge of my pattern. So shadows, they create patterns. And the pattern is basically a clearly defined shape. And you want to be able to cut those out. This here was not a shadow pattern. I'm just getting the eye in a little bit. When I draw one eye, I immediately want to go over and do the other eye and kind of track it over. So you don't have an animal or a person, whatever it is you're drawing, that looks lopsided. I'm going to make this much broader than I have. Eee. Okay, let's do the shadows on the side here. So again, I'm squinting crazy hard, seeing what is bluish, what is bright white, how can I make this into a shadow pattern, not just like a smudgy field. And so see how these shadow patterns are kind of clinging on those plane changes. See, it's almost like a little puzzle piece that I'm cutting out here. And I didn't shade anything yet. I'm trying to complete my pattern. So a pattern isn't just a line. A pattern goes all the way around, right? So I'm trying to see how far does this pattern go? See, and then it kind of runs off the page. Cast a little bit under the ear. See that strong cast shadow on the neck, and then it merges with the belly, but I didn't get to the belly. I'm letting that part go, shading in the shadow pattern. So what you're seeing me do here is the, as I, I said this before, but I'm going to say it again because I want to be clear. Um, you're seeing me do the equivalent of a upper arm workout, meaning I am pinpointing something that I'm focusing on in my drawing and I'm only working on that. I am not going all the way through the entire drawing process. I'm not completing the drawing. I'm not ending up with a finished piece. Was Does that mean that this drawing was worthless? Absolutely not, because I just practiced seeing shadow patterns better. Will I cut this out and frame it? Pfft, definitely not. <laughs> I'm going to put this in the trash. But it doesn't mean it's worthless. It just means um, I got what I needed from it, and now I'm moving on without any self-flagellation over it not being a beautiful drawing, because I know it's not supposed to be a beautiful drawing. Okay, last drawing of the evening or whenever it is that you're drawing this. Um, let me resharpen my pencil. I love the movement of this. I love the light shadow separation. Uh, and I'm going to try and work a little bit on form. So let's, let's make a singular, let's make a double focus. So form and light shadow.
and I definitely want it to feel like it's trotting. So I like the movement of it. So I'm playing or paying, excuse me, I'm paying close attention to the gesture of this guy here. So again, what's gesture? Gesture is connecting the disparate parts into a unified whole. So I can see how the nose visually connects into the neck and then flows into the leg. By playing that up, I unify the drawing, I capture the balance of this pose. And as I do this, so you see my, my hand is moving slowly, right? Um, I'm, I'm also thinking about, okay, how long is this? Like where to bring the butt in? Like how long is this in comparison to the height that I'm building here? So I'm paying attention already to some proportions as well with these rhythmic gesture lines. And squinting is your secret weapon when it comes to drawing, especially in the beginning of the drawing process, you wanna get rid of all the tantalizing textures and details so you can see the big overall shapes, the big overall directions. Because if you let yourself get pulled in too soon by highlights let's say you might end up with a really great highlight or with a really great tail texture but if it's on a horse that's like crazy tall like I'm like having legs are way too long for the torso scale that you've established then it kind of is worthless isn't it These cute little perked ears. I'm curious. Okay, so right now I'm pausing, I'm leaning back, zooming out, and I'm kind of just comparing my drawing to the horse, my drawing to the horse. Is there anything that kind of stands out right now to me that says, oh, you missed this, or this this angle isn't quite right. This is the time when I want to catch this. So pausing is part of the drawing process. So with the hair, try not to get too excited or worried about it. I'm just squinting really hard, seeing what kind of what are the overall shapes for it. All the little strands, I'm kind of ignoring them right now. I'm trying to group it into one big shape.
So what you see me do right now is specifying my shapes. Uh, what I mean by that is I'm moving away from these kind of flowy curves that are kind of searching and I'm moving into making marks that are more controlled. I'm teasing out the apex of any given curve, meaning the high point. But since I wanted to also get some light shadow captured and work on form, I'm, I'm not doing the whole shape specification process all over the body. I'm, I'm trying to move along. Some of these details, looking at where my subforms. So where do I see bumps and lumps? And you can just begin with like little ghosted in shapes, and then you can bring your shadow patterns over them. So here's that neck muscle, there's the other neck muscle. Now I'm squinting and I'm recording that shadow pattern. And I'm filling it in once I have a whole pattern. And there's this long shadow shape down the neck and then we have this thinner shape and right next to it and it goes over here down the shoulder up onto the leg See, and then i can shade that in Now this whole leg over here is in shadow, so I can drop that into my shadow mass. And then we have a little shadow mass by the eye that I didn't get yet. And now I can work a little bit across form on the edges of this shadow pattern to build a transition into the light. I can do some cross contouring work here to build some mid tones, like some of those darker areas in the shot in the light mass. So here the hair, you have a shadow pattern running down this part of the mane. And to see that I'm squinting really hard, which parts of the mane are being hit by light, which ones don't get reached by the light. Those are the patterns I'm drawing.
going across form as I'm getting out of the shadows with these kind of cross contour marks. And establishing some of these points. Hey James, <laughs> I don't know when you typed your hi, maybe you're already gone again, but good to see you. So again, so here's the shadow pattern. I kind of map out that shape first, and then I'll work on the edge to make it look three dimensional with these cross contours. Oops, what am I doing here? I lost my place there. Okay, so let's fill in this shadow shape. And I lose track of time. These so these are timed, as you know by now. Um, but like when I'm in the 15 minutes, I don't know if I'm closer to the end of the 15 minutes or um, at the beginning. So I'll very likely run out of time. Excuse my loud <laughs> pencil sharpener. Okay, so see I've mapped in or mapped out, whichever way you want to think about it, my shadow pattern. And now I'm going across the form, at the edge of this form shadow, going across and over. To build the roundness. I don't want to do it for this here. This here is a cast shadow edge. It's like the haunches here. The light's coming from there. Um, these haunches are blocking the light from reaching here. So this I don't want to go across contour. I want to keep that nice and sharp. Here these are form shadow edges. And if you don't get what I was just explaining, I'll be sure to make a video about shadows and the logic behind shadows. Building some of these forms of the muscles on the foreleg here. And also you probably notice the later we get into the drawing process, the quieter I get. It's the thing that happens with us is we sink into our drawing brain and our drawing brain is not the verbal brain. <laughs> it's, it's a visual brain. So let me switch over. Where's my mouse? There. <laughs> so we're already done. This one really quickly. I hope, I hope you were able to draw along. I hope you're, you were able to get what I was trying to um, give you today. And that was the idea that when you know you only have a few minutes for a sketch and you wanna make this a learning experience, a practice, like an intentional practice, you don't just wanna do some something on autopilot, you finally wanna get better. The best way to get better is to pinpoint what about the reference or your subject matter that you want to latch on to, so to say. So if you want to latch on to um, a linear way of creating a drawing by using energetic gestural marks, or whether you want to latch on to the flatness and make this a 2D design, um, or if you wanna make this a, really translate the roundness or the light and shadow or the values, or the texture, so you get my idea. So we can choose, we can team those things up, we can um, focus on texture and light and shadow. Um, but we wanna do this intentionally, 
and get away from just going on autopilot because you're here to get better, right? And um, to get better, we need to do things like the professionals do. And um, tonight or today, whenever you're finding this session, you took your first step in that direction. So let me know how it went. If you have a drawing that you're not totally embarrassed about, find me on Instagram. I'm at Kira Studios. You can tag me there. You can post a story of your drawing, put my name on it so I can see it because I want to give you a virtual high five for drawing along, cheering you on. Also, as I said, I said it earlier, if you don't want to miss any of these sessions, you like the way we, we work here together, um, get on my insiders email list. So if you go to the description below, click on the see more, there are three freebies. You can choose one of those three. One is a free figure drawing mini course. The other one is a workbook to improve your drawings with three questions. And the other one is a pen and ink tool guide. So sign up for one of those three, get on the mailing list and always know what's coming up next. So, um, I just saw your question about how can you improve in figure drawing. Um, definitely watch some of our previous sketch sessions and especially there's one figure drawing in less than seven minutes. Check that one out. I think it'll get you started and definitely um, get on that mini course I just talked about. So grab that and you'll learn how you can improve with your figure drawing. I hope you had fun tonight. I sure did and I will see you next time. Take care.